Hi everyone. In this video, we'll try to see how we can perform the relay interfacing with Raspberry Pi Pico W board. Now, why do we need something like a relay to be interfaced? Let me answer the first question uh, and the answer is very simple. Essentially, we have seen that Raspberry Pi Pico can only output 3.3 volt as logic high and 0 volt as logic low. Now, when you do have such a small output and if you want to turn on any output devices like a lamp or a motor or any such thing, then you simply cannot do that using the simple 3.3 volt signal. So that's why what we do is we make use of something called as a relay to act as a switching device between Raspberry Pi, Pico or for that sake any microcontroller and the output device. Let's see how do we do that. For doing this, we will simply have a look at this schematic. So we have seen already this, that we have something of a resistor, LED and ground connection and you can blink LED. We also have seen a program output of the same, corrected to GPIO 26 over here. Now the problem is, <coughs> this can only turn on the LED, just like mentioned in this schematic, but it cannot turn on, let's say a bulb. So what we need to do is we need to know one thing for sure that bulb or AC bulb is an AC device. Raspberry Pi, Pico or any microcontroller is a DC device. So you cannot directly interface the two AC and DC signal. So what we do is we make use of a device called as relay. Let me show you the symbol of a relay. <laughs> So usually <clears throat> this is how a relay symbol is. What relay has are basically or essentially three different terminals. One is called as common, one is called as NO and one is called as NC. Common is basically a variable or a movable terminal. Then there is NO and then there is NC. <clears throat> At rest, when you have not given any supply to relay, what happens is the common terminal is internally connected to NC terminal and when you give a supply to this relay which is usually a magnetic passive coil there are no polarities for it but the supply that we have to give to it is somewhat different and it depends upon the coil that relay has. You may have different relays with different coil voltages the most popular one or the most common one are 12 volt relays, 24 volt relays and 5 volt relays. Let's assume that we have a 12 volt relay. So if you give supply to these two coil points, L1, L2 points, what happens is the relay gets magnetized. And because of this magnetic action, because of this magnetism induced inside the relay coil, the common terminal which was residing on NC or normally closed gets pulled towards NO internally. It's literally a magnetic action. So there is a switching terminal moving from NC terminal towards the NO terminal. And because of this action, what happens is now the common and NO are connected each other, connected with each other. And this is a magnetic action. This 12 volt and ground has no relation directly with NO, NC and common. Because of that, what happens is it is easier for us to simply use an AC supply and a bulb to directly connect the uh, connect to the relay terminals. Now let me take an AC supply um, symbol over here or alternator. Let's see if we have one. Okay. I'll just remove this text here. So alternator doesn't have a positive and negative terminal. So I'll just remove them as well from this symbol. So what you need is you need an alternator and then you will take let's say a bulb and you connect it simply like you do usually any light bulb will do. Let's take a symbol like that. 
So one of the terminals of the supply goes to bulb and the other terminal of the supply and the other terminal of the bulb, this is where the relay gets connected. So this point will come to NO and this point will go to here. Now see what happens. When you give 12 volt to this relay coil, the coil energizes and the bulb turns on. It simply glows. The problem is if the relay has a 12 volt coil signal, then how you can give 12 volt using the 3.3 volt output of your Raspberry Pi Pico. We just can't do that. And that is why what we do is we use a switching circuit like a transistor in place. So what we do is we again give a current limited output from Raspberry Pi Pico to the base of transistor. And then what we do is we simply use this relay coil as a load to Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, to the transistor. So I'll just remove these wires now. I'll take it over here. So 12 volt from here will go to the relay. The second point of relay, instead of going directly to ground, will come to collector over here and the emitter will be connected to ground. Now what happens is in this configuration is your Raspberry Pi Pico or microcontroller will generate a small signal like 3.3 volt when you give logic 1 to it. If you have a proper resistor like 330 ohm, it will allow to pass 10 milliampere of current to the base of transistor. This will make the base to emitter and base to collector junction of this NPN transistor powered biased, which will in turn allow the current to flow from this 12 volt supply through the relay coil towards the ground. And this basically will simply turn on the relay without interfering anything from this AC supply circuitry towards the Raspberry Pi Pico circuitry. As a precaution what we can do or what is usually done is people usually use a diode in a free willing configuration let me just search a diode so that when the relay coil turns off it should turn off completely diode just take one n4001 And this diode is connected in a reverse fashion. So I'll just extend this wire to accommodate the diode in between. And make it easier for you to understand. Okay. So this is how the diode is connected. The cathode goes to 12 volt and the anode goes to the collector. This helps the proper shutdown of relay coil because when you simply give zero to the transistor's base, the transistor's junction will be reverse bias, the switch is off, but the charges stored inside the relay coil don't have a path to dissipate itself and maybe the relay will keep turn on itself for some time. So this diode helps the relay charges to be released completely. Now if you have the connections made like this, if you simply make this pin high, the relay will turn on giving a tick sound and your light bulb will be turning on. You give zero here and the light bulb will turn off. As simple as that. Now to make things more easier, what happens is currently you will find these relay modules available in market. Something like this. The beauty of these relay modules is that it comes with everything on board. You don't have to connect a transistor. You don't have to connect a diode, nothing. All you need to do is simply connect supply voltage or the relay coil voltage. In my case, it's 12 volt. In this case, it's 5 volt relay voltage. Then you need to give your input signal and you need to connect ground here. And this relay will turn on and off. Here on this side, you will find the NONC and common terminal using which you can perform the connections as I was showing you. In terms of the program, there is no change at all. But what I'll do is I will definitely simply remove these lines from the code for now so that I can experiment what happens when I give 1 to it and what happens when I give 0 to it. So I'll just save this code. 
I'll stop it first and then I'll save it. And now what I'll do is I'll turn on my camera. Now you can see this is the relay module that I have. These are the NONC and common connections. This is where you should connect the bulb wiring and the power cord. So my connections are very simple. One point of the AC supply, you can see here the yellow wire is going to relay. The second point of AC supply, which is going through the pink wire, sorry, one point is going to uh, this blue wire is going to bulb. Second point of bulb is coming to relay and this another point of AC supply is going back to relay. These are the terminals over here. Make sure the wire is unplugged when you check like this. So one is connected to N and another one is connected to the middle terminal that is common. And these are my relay connections. So this is a 12 volt operating relay. So I have a 12 volt breadboard power supply here. I'm giving 12 volt to the relay from this pin. I'm connecting or making the ground of 12 volt supply and Raspberry Pi Pico same. And this is my input signal, which will go to the relay, if you can see here. And this is the pin that I'll connect to Raspberry Pi P codes, same pin, GPIO 26. Now, I don't need this LED and I don't need this resistor either. These are from my LED blinking experiment. So, I'll just remove them. Now, let's <coughs> keep the LED value to be 0. And let's play this code. Okay. And now I will connect it over here. Now, can you see anything here? No. Because the value that we have given is 0. Now what I will do is, I will give the value from 0 to 1 here. And play it. Did you heard a tick sound? I am just going to make it 0 again. I am going to play it again. And now I am going to keep the mic close to the relay so that you can hear it well. This is my mic. Making it 1. And I am going to play it. That is the ticking sound. Now that we know that this is how the relay is ticking, what I will do is I will simply keep the LED blink program like this over here. You can rename this LED to relay or whatever you like. And we will simply run this script. Okay. Now this will keep the relay on for 2 seconds, off for 2 seconds. On for 2 seconds and off for 2 seconds. Now I am going to give power to the circuit. AC supply will be connected now. I have connected it. Can you see? <clears throat> With the Raspberry Pi Pico W module, I am interfacing a relay and with the relay in turn we have interfaced a bulb as simple as that now this is a breadboard power supply <clears throat> you can use any other 12 volt source and you need to know some breadboard wiring but essentially if you understand it or not the wiring remains the same like shown over here now if i have to modify that for a module I will simply show 12 volt supply, this connection and ground going to the relay module circuit and then the connections like this across common and NO, these two wires over here. You should not touch it when the video or any experimentation is going on. So please play this experiment safely and see for the relay experiment yourself. The benefit of this exercise is to understand how you can interface a live AC appliance using Relay so that you can create a home automation project or any kind of project where you want to turn on and off a device like a Relay. Thank you for watching this video.